form of protectionism should be enforced at national level, at least on strategic areas such as agriculture. French politician and granddaughter of Front National founder Jean-Marie Le Pen, Marion Marachal's words are very true of any country which seeks to develop agriculture. They are especially true of Nigeria, a country rich in agricultural endowment with great potentials in numerous food and cash crops, vast cultivable land and a conducive weather for agriculture. Nigeria is ironically a country with doors wide open to the importation of almost all crops which local farmers are capable of producing. The consequences of the poor protection of Nigerian farmers and their produce is the huge waste of harvests recorded annually, a situation which discourages farming and frustrates the development of agriculture in the country. It is also a clear and present threat to the country's current bid for self-sufficiency in tomato paste production. First, you should start to buy made in Nigeria. If government like, let them bring all the money in Nigeria and give me free of charge. I produce and I cannot sell. Zero. They should control the ports, control the fake product that is coming to this country. Every world, country, every state in this country, or in the whole world, do the same thing. You cannot bring your borders for fake products that your people will be eating and dying to against the food that is manufactured. How do I survive? If my cost price, my production cost in Nigeria, because Nigerian cost is high, is ten dollars. Somebody was in for four dollars. He can't come here and do something with me. He can't. That's why we see say, we don't want to join them to kill Nigerians. I will equally turn my machine to do something that they But they have conscience. So that is one. They have to create the market one. They have to tell Nigerians because it's simple. We need to support president in any government in any area. I want to tell you, brother have good intention, but those civil servants, I don't know them. Few of them are very, very bad. I know they are the good ones. If not, how can they tell you that when you tell you, oh, you know, capacity utilization? Before we were nine companies producing in this country, now we remain only two indigenous. They are waiting for capacity utilization. Until one of us are closed down, then capacity utilization will come. Once importation of paste is allowed to continue, then the local farmers may not be motivated to grow more tomato. And we, the local processors, also will not have enough tomato to be able to meet the demand and also to be able to uh, compete favorably. Let me give you a, a case in point. When we started, uh, before we started this factory in March, the cost of tomato paste in China was $1,200 FOB. And the moment the news started spreading that, yeah, the Dangote tomato factory has started running, suddenly they dropped that price to $740 FOB. So, which means they are still trying to make us very uncompetitive. Even if we produce paste, locally is going to be more expensive than any imported paste. The story of the tomato crisis is an ongoing one and farmers market will keep a close eye on the developments there. But this week on the program, it is yet another pressing problem. The rising cost of fertilizers as the 2016 cropping season begins, plus the challenge of obtaining seeds for planting. These are the problems arising from the absence of a smooth transition in the implementation of input support schemes for farmers. And this is our concern on this week's edition of Farmers Market. Farmers Market promotes Nigeria's agricultural prowess, celebrates successes, identifies the challenges besetting the sector, and advocates policies and programs that will help grow Nigeria's agroeconomy. Varieties of highly nutritious rice in Abakaliki, Ofada, Kano, yet Nigeria wastes billions on rice importation. 
cocoa in the southwest and yet top dollar is spent on imported chocolate and beverages. Fruits rot in Benue, Nasarawa, Kogi, yet imported juice line the shops. 82 million hectares of rich arable land, yet no jobs and food insecurity threatens. Our real wealth is in farming, livestock, hatcheries, fisheries, horticulture, and forestry. It's time to act different. Time to bring Nigerian farmers to the market. Farmers Market, growing Nigeria's agroeconomy. Showing every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. on AIT. Decades of neglect of agriculture and near total dependence on oil have had a telling impact on Nigeria's economy, fueling the country's import addiction. In 2011, government figures show that the country's food import bill had risen to 1.3 trillion naira per annum, with wheat, rice, sugar and fish topping the list. In spite of this, the figures also show that Nigeria's food import bill was still growing at an unsustainable 11% per annum. The obvious consequences include a double-digit inflation, high pressure on the Naira, displacement of local farmers and food production, and of course, rising unemployment. These are problems which Nigeria still contends with today. I don't understand why we have to wait till we get to this point before we prioritize agriculture. It just takes a few strategic steps by government. I'll give you some of those steps. Number one thing we need to do is to increase investment in agriculture. When you increase investment, you make money available for extension service support. You make money available for research to produce better yielding varieties. You make money available for financing for small scale farmers. You make money available for infrastructure such as small dams so that they can counter the impact of climate change. You make available simple things like land and farmers have access to land. They produce. You, you look at something like the Nessal uh, policy of the central bank that makes financing available to farmers. It, 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 makes, it changes everything because then they can buy inputs. They can, they can pay for you know, farm labor and their productivity increases. Government has the role of just creating an enabling policy environment, ensuring policy continuity and enabling the private sector make their investments and it, and it all starts to happen. When the Nigerian government under former President Goodluck Jonathan introduced the Agricultural Transformation Agenda in 2011, the objectives were to add 20 million metric tons of food to domestic food supply by 2015 and stimulate the creation of 3.5 million jobs along the agricultural value chains. These goals were not quite met due to poor funding and general lack of political will. But agriculture was set on a clear trajectory of development. Most of what affects the private sector is lack of policy continuity. If we just find what has worked, we can take it and continue with it. I'll give you some examples. The, the Agricultural Transformation Agenda identified the crops in which Nigeria has comparative advantage. We're looking at cocoa. We're looking at rice, we're looking at cassava, um, even palm oil. Um, to give you an, an, an idea of the opportunities that exist, the Cassava Growers Association told the government that if they just make available 5 million hectares out of the 85 million hectares of arable land in Nigeria, that they can deliver to the, uh, to the, to the government in terms of revenue 9 trillion every year, that it's doable. And cassava is something that we have the highest yielding varieties. We have capacity for growing them. It is a staple in Nigeria and you can produce and have space for export. You go to rice. Nigeria spends two point, spent $2.6 billion from 2012 to 2015 on the importation of rice. The rice need, the rice demand in Nigeria is about 2.5 million metric tons. We only produce 500,000 metric tons. We are producing only 20% of the demand. If you just ban rice importation, 
alone for three, four years, we will become self-sufficient. The infrastructure is there. Farmers have, have, farmers have skills. The private sector have invested in paddy fields. It's just political will and having the right policy in place. If you look at cocoa, there's a cocoa deficiency of about 1 million metric tons in the international market. Chocolate producers are panicking. Nigeria presently produces uh, between 250 to 300,000 metric tons of cocoa. The agricultural transformation agenda set a target of reaching 500,000 metric tons of cocoa. If we just continue on that path, in April 2012, the Growth Enhancement Support Scheme, GES, was introduced as a component of the Agricultural Transformation Agenda to make inputs, especially fertilizers and seeds, easily accessible and affordable for local farmers at the right time and in the right quality. The scheme was necessitated by the need to eliminate the mindless corruption that had attended the implementation of government's input subsidy programs for decades. For instance, until 2011, over 60% of government's agricultural spending went into fertilizer procurement and distribution. It was a system in which government procured fertilizers and seeds and distributed directly to farmers. But only 11% of Nigeria's 14 million farmers benefited from the program. The system failed to deliver fertilizers to genuine farmers. Instead, rich and powerful political farmers hijacked the subsidized fertilizers. Sand was mixed with fertilizers and sold to government. Payments were made for fertilizers not supplied and already subsidized fertilizers were sold back to government, with a lot more taken across the borders to be sold in neighboring countries. In the words of former Minister of Agriculture, Akiumi Adeshina, government was not subsidizing farmers. Instead, it was subsidizing corruption. As if this was not enough, a large portion of the seeds sold to government was grain bought on the open market and corruptly passed as certified seeds. The consequence of these was that farming yield was poor. Nigeria had to depend on food imports and the cost was huge. The Growth Enhancement Support Scheme, a brainchild of the former Minister of Agriculture, was to provide subsidized inputs to farmers, to reach farmers directly with seeds and fertilizers through an electronic wallet system which allows farmers to receive subsidized electronic vouchers for their seeds and fertilizers on their mobile phones. Uh, throughout my agricultural sergeant, over 30 years, I've been all levels of agriculture. Uh, the concept of GES has not only provided a solution to uh, input supply to the farmer, but it also it has galvanized and of course uh, brought out the best out of the professionals in agriculture in Nigeria. What I mean by me here is uh, you can, years back we don't have this facility, but because of the system we saw, uh, the GES program was designed, was tailored to provide service to the farmer, at the same time, support professionals from the research level up to the seed companies. There are so many seed companies now. What we have now is, like I said, we took advantage of the program, and this is what we established, and we are now serving farmers without government intervention. You see? So that, that is the thing. Provide a program that will mature, at the same time, graduate from government to become private entrepreneurship. That is the genius, and that is what we have done. The scheme was not without challenges. Bad road networks hampering the timely delivery of inputs to farmers, poor GSM services, and the inability of the uneducated rural farmers to use mobile phones were some of them. Despite these challenges, the system was largely effective. At inception in 2012, government figures show that 1.5 million smallholder farmers got their subsidized seeds and fertilizers using their mobile phones. This figure increased to over 3.5 million farmers in 2013, with over 10 million farmers captured in the registers of the Ministry of Agriculture. 
The GES scheme allows the farmers to pay 50% of the cost of the fertilizers and seeds to retailers who now sold directly to them instead of receiving the inputs through the government. The impact of this, according to the last administration, was an estimated increase of 8.1 million metric tons in domestic food supply. From 2012, when the GES started, to 2014, the program worked effectively with little or no complaints from the farmers and the retailers. In the past, through the former Minister of Agriculture, Adishina, he did his best when he said he has killed corruption in agriculture. Why? Because this is the only ministry or the only minister we know that when you participate in GES, you get your pay without knowing who pays you. We don't 2013, 2014 before we have issue of election. That's why when, when our money hung up. Now, the GES operation is that farmers are registered at the local level. Every word centers across the country uh, through a platform of what we call cellular who is the platform owners uh, they now develop the farmers list after registration now those farmers list are used in allocating centers to each center each, each state in nigeria how many farmers you do how, based on the registration in that state and once your name is on that list you go to your center and redeem the intervention by the federal government. In the past, the intervention is in, some, in most of the state are done in two ways. Federal government intervened by 25%, state government 25%. That's what makes it 50%. That's why you had the program, okay, 50%. If the fertilizer's price are paid at 5,500, farmers pay one and get one free. What, what the GS program did was it provided the service as a farm gets down to the farmer level. And what, what that did was, it stabilizes the market price of inputs. That means if, for example, a farmer using one bag, two bags, which are the most dominant in the local areas, seldom three bags, you supply him with one bag, two bags. The, the, the thing is, it was not enough, but yet, you're able to prevent those small, small, small uh, farmers into going to the market, and that, of course, has stabilized the market of agricultural inputs. And if this tempo is sustained in the long run, the system will work out, will graduate, and of course, seed companies will take over, fertilizer companies will take over, the government should withdraw. That, that's the concept. The system was still in place in 2015, but being an election year, its funding, like those of all other development programs, fell to the bottom rung of government's priorities. And that's where it has remained till today. Even though the federal government has several refuted media reports that it had scrapped the GES program and removed the subsidy on fertilizers, retailers who supply the inputs to farmers between 2014 and 2015 are still waiting to be paid. They made liability which they didn't create it and they promised to pay. Now, but the issue of the payment is the delay. Now, if you delay payment, that means the suppliers through their bankers, the agro dealers, will not be able to have enough funds to bring in more inputs to sell even the open market around these years. And that is the major issue now. If you pay us today, how long will it take us to import? The import has started uh, a few months back when the output of last year was shorter than previous year and the price of commodities skyrocketed and people are finding it difficult to buy because as a worker, if your salary is not increased, you still go to the same market. When you are buying a bag of rice, 8,000, 9,000, now you have to buy 16,000. The result of this is that there is an acute shortage of fertilizer, and when available, it is priced out of the reach of local farmers who need it. A bag of fertilizer which cost the farmers not more than 2,700 naira in the past now goes for over 7,000 naira with no GES support and no subsidy. In the first place, the commodity is scarce. Last year it was available somehow. But this year it's not even available. You can hardly mention any company in Nigeria that has more than 1,000 trailers to distribute. Now, this is a country where the demand during this period, 
uh, consumption can, can reach as, as high as um, 500,000 metric ton within the same one and a half months. That product is not available. Apart from this, government's ban of the importation of urea, a major ingredient in the local production of fertilizer, has also contributed to the scarcity of the soil nutrient. The restriction is a fallout of the current fight against insurgency, and it is to prevent terrorists from easily accessing urea for the purpose of making improvised explosive devices. The Nigerian government, instead of uh, looking at the solution from different angle, they are looking at it from security angle only. And that security angle says urea is used as explosive, so don't sell it. It took time before the government understand that uh, there's no way farming can be done without urea. Now, that has been resolved, but still, you hardly get permission to bring in urea. Local companies licensed to produce fertilizers could have filled the gap, but their production capacity falls way below the country's fertilizer needs. The consequence of all these is that Nigerian farmers who already use just 20 kilograms of fertilizer per hectare, about 80% below the recommended 100 kilograms per hectare, may have to do without the soil nutrients. And the yield for the next harvest season may also be adversely affected. That's Farmer's Market for this week. We hope to get official response to the following pressing questions next week. Is the Buhari government abandoning the Growth Enhancement Support Program? Is the government removing subsidy from fertilizer? How is the government which seeks to develop agriculture as a veritable alternative to oil planning to support farmers with inputs? You can see this program again whenever you want to. Just visit our website www.farmersmarketng.com For feedback and sponsorship considerations, please contact us on 09 Email us on info at farmersmarketng.com Follow us on Twitter at farmersmarketng and like our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash farmers market entry. Farmers market returns same time, same station next week. Thanks for watching.